Hello, welcome, Cabbage here. In Elden Ring, I'm having fun just making new characters and getting uh, overpowered weapons right away. <laughs> so here, let's do Lars, and we want to get uh, thrusting swords with him. I thought that the uh, the two-star sword that he comes with in New Reincarnation was always very interesting, because that's like a uh, like a fencing type of sword. And I looked at all of the uh, starting classes, and none of them really appealed to me. Uh, one of them does come with a thrusting sword, but it's um, the prisoner, which has a lot of intelligence, which I don't need. So we'll just go for the uh, the wretch. <laughs> so yeah, we got a guy in his underwear, two-handing a club. <laughs> and I don't remember in the uh, the character creation screen skin being this dark. I might want to change that later. But yeah, I am enjoying the uh, the new character creation. And, uh, you know, playing Sarafa, playing this Lars, I've learned that uh, it's not that difficult to uh, kind of start a new character. And then, like, the world, you know, it's not that big that it becomes a, um, a real obstacle to creating new characters. Okay, so here we'll get the Grand Epe. That is a uh, large thrusting sword. I might want to use that later. Uh, but really, I want to use the, uh, the kind of the smaller ones and then uh, dual wield them. All right, but we'll get the, uh, the medallions so that we can go to the uh, Altus Peninsula. Uh, again, we'll take the teleporter, go to the north of Kaled. And uh, thankfully, I found some pants very early. <laughs> All right. And then uh, Melina here. If the Elden Ring she will take us to the round table. If you have... it seems torrent, <laughs> and shirtless Lars here there is just is very funny. <laughs> gathering place. Very well. uh, that I hair there, that was the closest I could find to uh, Lars. Alrighty, we'll go to the round table. And then here we can get our first uh, weapon. We can go to the, uh, to the twin crones and we can buy the scimitar. Uh, the rapier, sorry. Uh, don't quite have the stats, however. So let's go back to the uh, the bonfire, I guess. Get the stats. Okay, there it is, rapier. And we are set. Uh, I don't show it in this video, but I pick up that shield from the, uh, the Weeping Peninsula. I could get, you know, a, uh, a parry shield from um, merchants, but just to save me a little bit of uh, souls. Pick that one up. And then we'll talk to this guy, and then let's get the heal incantation. Uh, but don't have the stats to cast that either, so we'll have to uh, level that up. Okay. We'll uh, put that in there. We'll remember it. And then here I have the stats in order to uh, two-hand the uh, the Grand Epe, the Great Epe. And as usual, I can farm the uh, little guys just outside to uh, get runes. And then here I'll show this. We go south from the uh, the beast place, and then there's that uh, that rise, that tower. We can jump on here, and then we can pick up some. Uh, golden runes here to get uh, lots of runes, especially that eight there. The six is nice too. But we can use this to uh, raise levels or whatever for the requirements of the uh, weapons we pick up. That was something I hadn't showed in the uh, previous video. Alright, but then we'll go to the uh, fort here and get the other half of the medallion. Alrighty. 
then back to the round table, we'll buy the seal so we can cast the heal incantation. Okay, this will be very important. <laughs> Alright, and then we'll go to the north of uh, Leania Lakes near uh, Eiji, the uh, blacksmith. There's some ruins uh, right to the south of him. And there is a hidden basement. I'm looking for it. There it is. <laughs> okay, we're going to go in. We're going to fight a very difficult boss, apparently. I haven't uh, played this in any other uh, character. Uh, but if we use the heal incantation, we will take away half the life of the boss. We'll just use it twice as a big AoE, thankfully, and get rid of it immediately. <laughs> All right, get some souls, or runes. We can use that to raise levels. And then the treasure here. Is the ice crystal needle, I think it is, which is another thrusting sword. Uh, but that too, I will need uh, levels in order to use. Uh, but here it is. And the most interesting thing here is the R2 is a little bit of a projectile. That's super cool. Uh, it doesn't cost FP, so I can use it infinitely, basically. And then we can come here to the north of the uh, Altus Plateau, next to this uh, poison castle. Or maybe that technically this is near uh, Galmer Volcano. Alright, we'll go off to the left. There's an NPC here uh, who has a rapier, thrusting sword, that they can drop. And then we'll use this uh, ice needle to kind of keep our distance. We'll try to do um, ranged attacks as much as possible. Uh, but yeah, as we can see, all it takes is stamina. It does not take the uh, FP. And then there are some rocks here, which we can kind of use to our advantage. We can uh, take the time that they spend, um, you know, jumping up the rocks to hit them. And we can get the Antsper Rapier, I think it is. So yeah, now I have my uh, two kind of unique rapiers that I can use the, uh, the dual wield with. And it seems this is a popular setup. We can do lots of status effects. We can do Frost with the, uh, the Ice Needle. We can do uh, Rot with the Antsper Rapier. And if we infuse them with like Poison or Bleed, then we can get even like four status effects. <laughs> so this would be a fun uh, build to do. Uh, but I have to fix this character model. Try to make him look as young as possible, but he just kind of ended up looking like an Oompa Loompa. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll see you again. Take care.